If you've never heard of Lake Disappear, don't feel left out. Even plenty of New Zealanders don't know it exists. Tucked away in the Waikato region, not far from Ragland on the west coast of the North Island, this so-called lake isn't the sort of place you'd expect to see in glossy tourist brochures. It's shallow, swampy and sometimes barely looks like a lake at all. But what it lacks in postcard glamour, it makes up for one of the strangest geological stories in the country. The name says it all. Lake Disappear literally disappears. Water flows into it, gathers for a while, and then drains away underground like someone pulled the plug out of a giant bath. That quirky vanishing act is what first grabs people's attention. But the real magic is in how the land itself was built, layer by layer over millions of years. To really appreciate Lake Disappear, you have to look beneath the surface. The Waikatu is a landscape shaped by fire, water and time. Imagine a patchwork quilt where every square was stitched in a different era. Some pieces are made of volcanic ash, others of lava, others of old seabeds turned to stone. Lake Disappear sits right on the boundary between two of those squares, and that's what gives it its unusual behaviour. But let's rewind a bit. Millions of years ago before cows were munching away on Waikatu grass, this part of New Zealand was under the sea. Layers of shell debris, lime mud and marine sediments piled up to form thick beds of limestone. You can still see those limestone layers today in nearby outcrops, riddled with caves and sinkholes. Fast forward a few million years and the sea retreats. Now the central North Island comes alive with volcanic activity. We're talking massive eruptions from places like Topor, Rotorua and even further afield. Ash clouds blanket the land, rivers carry volcanic debris downstream and lava flow spread across the countryside. Over time those volcanic deposits bury the old limestone in many places. But the limestone doesn't just go away, it's still down there, doing what limestone always does, dissolving slowly in rainwater and carving out underground drainage systems. Now here's where things get interesting. Lake Disappear sits in a shallow depression where surface streams flow in but don't have an obvious outlet. Normally that would mean a lake gradually fills up and stabilises, but instead the water at Lake Disappear finds cracks in the limestone beneath the volcanic cover. Those cracks lead into a network of underground passages and sinkholes, swallowing up the water and whisking it away below ground. So what you're really seeing when you look at Lake Disappear isn't just a surface pond. It's the top of a karst system, which is a fancy geological term for a landscape where limestone dissolves and creates underground drainage. If you've ever seen pictures of caves in Waitomo with glowworms, you've seen karst in action. Lake Disappear is basically a surface expression of that same kind of hidden cave world. One of the coolest parts of the story is how the volcanic deposits interact with the older limestone. Imagine a leaky roof, in this case the volcanic cover, sitting over a sponge, the limestone. Rain and surface water trickles through cracks in the roof until they reach the sponge, where the water starts moving sideways on the ground. At Lake Disappear that roof is made of volcanic tufts and ash layers, and a sponge is the limestone beneath. This mix of geology creates the perfect conditions for a disappearing lake. The volcanic deposits form a basin that collects water, but the limestone underneath refuses to hold it. Instead the limestone quietly drains it away like a natural plumbing system. So where does all this water go? That's a good question and geologists have actually tried to figure it out. Tracer dye studies, where harmless coloured dye is poured into the lake and later looked for downstream, suggest the water resurfaces in nearby streams and springs, feeding into the local drainage network. So the lake doesn't really vanish into nothing. It just takes a detour through the hidden underworld before rejoining the surface flow. And this is a common trick in cast landscapes. Streams can disappear into sinkholes, run underground for kilometres, and then pop back up somewhere else, sometimes in spectacular springs. Lake Disappear is basically a Waikato sized example of this phenomenon. Now you might think of all this geology as something ancient and fixed, but in New Zealand landscapes are never truly finished. The country sits on the boundary between the Pacific and Indo-Australian tectonic plates, which means the ground itself is constantly shifting, uplifting and cracking. That restless tectonic background keeps places like Lake Disappear dynamic. For example, fault lines running through the region can subtly tilt the land, changing drainage patterns over time. Earthquakes can open new cracks or block old ones. Erosion continues to eat away at the volcanic cover, exposing more of the limestone beneath. All this means that Lake Disappear, quirky as it is today, might look very different in another few thousand years. The geology also ties into the way the land has been used. The surrounding area is mostly farmland, but because the lake drains away so efficiently, it doesn't flood the surrounding fields as much as you'd expect. 
At the same time, the swampy margins and underground drainage make it tricky terrain for building. And of course, there's the cultural element. A disappearing lake is the sort of thing that naturally sparks curiosity, stories and names. Maldi knew these landscapes long before geologists mapped them, and the name Lake Disappear carries that same sense of mystery for modern locals. If we step back even further, Lake Disappear is just one piece of the wider Waikato geological puzzle. This region is basically a giant catchment area for volcanic debris from the central North Island. Every time Topol or Rotorua erupted in the past couple hundred thousand years, enormous amounts of ash and pumice rained down on Waikato. Those eruptions filled valleys, dammed rivers and reshaped the land. The Waikato River itself, the longest river in New Zealand, has changed course multiple times because of volcanic eruptions and landslides. Against that backdrop of shifting rivers and layers of volcanic material, Lake Disappear's quirky behaviour makes perfect sense. It's like a small side act in the much bigger drama of the region. Now you might wonder, why does any of this matter? Isn't Lake Disappear just a swamp that drains away? Well, from a scientific perspective, it's a neat window into how different rock types interact. You've got volcanic deposits meeting limestone, surface drainage meeting underground karst systems, and tectonic activity keeping everything unstable. From a practical angle, understanding how water disappears underground is also important for land use and water quality. Farmers, ecologists, and local councils all need to know where that water is going. Because whatever flows into Lake Disappear eventually comes out somewhere else, carrying nutrients, sediments, and sometimes pollutants. And from a storytelling point of view, it's just plain cool. A lake that vanishes beneath your feet? That's the sort of thing that captures the imagination. Lake Disappear is part of a larger theme across New Zealand. The landscape is full of oddities created by the collision of volcanic, sedimentary, and tectonic processes. There are lakes formed by volcanic craters, lakes dammed by landslides, lakes carved by glaciers, and then there's this one, formed by the unusual partnership of volcanic debris and dissolving limestone. It's not big, it's not flashy, but it's unique and in geology, that's worth celebrating. So here's the short version of a very long tale. Millions of years ago, limestone formed in ancient seas. Volcanic eruptions later buried their limestone under lava and ash. Rainwater carved underground drainage through the limestone, creating hidden channels. A surface basin formed above the limestone, collecting water. The water drains away underground, making the lake disappear. Simple, right? And yet, behind that simple disappearing act is a geological story that spans millions of years. From warm shallow seas to fiery volcanic eruptions, all stitched together by the slow but relentless work of water. Lake Disappear might never make it onto postcards, but for geologists and for anyone who loves landscapes with a hidden twist, it's one of the most fascinating spots in the Waikato. I hope you found this as interesting as I did. And as always, thanks for watching. Before I end this video, I'd like to give a big shout out to my Patreon and YouTube members. Thank you so much to everyone that helps to support this channel.